Self-defense is a bedrock principle of our society. If we do not have the right to defend ourselves against harm, then all of our other rights become obsolete. This is not something that is just discussed in a political science uh, classroom. This is not something that is just said on the debate stage at, at, at presidential debates. Self-defense is so pivotal that if we do not have the right to defend ourselves against harm, we're not going to be a free society. We're not going to be a free society. We will be the victims of crimes. It will be immediate anarchy because criminals will victimize um, people, anybody. The strong criminal will victimize the weaker victim every day of the week because law enforcement is a reactionary force. Law enforcement can't prevent every crime. Law enforcement can serve as a deterrent knowing if a criminal knows there's consequences for his actions, he might choose not to commit a crime. But law enforcement cannot always prevent a crime from being committed. That's oftentimes left to us. That's why so many of us um, exercise our Second Amendment right, because we know that ultimately our safety comes down to us. So think about this. If Daniel Penny is convicted of second degree manslaughter, if he is imprisoned for over a decade for defending himself, where does that leave all of us? And where does this leave the good Samaritans in our society, right? If a good Samaritan defending or good Samaritan intervening during the commission of a crime is worried that he will be indicted and imprisoned for intervening, he's not gonna intervene unless his own personal safety is threatened. So think about if, if some horrendous criminal is sexually assaulting uh, a teenage girl and she's screaming for help, do you think that men around her are going to rush to her aid if they know that they're gonna be sent to prison for over a decade for helping her? It's a horrendous, th th this is why I say that we're at this pivotal moment in our society because if we allow this to happen, if we don't speak out against this, then our country's not gonna be the same. We're not going to actually have a social fabric because part of a social fabric is citizens being interconnected. Is as, as a woman, when I walk down the street, I'm not just confident in my safety if I'm by myself, for example, because maybe I can still carry. I'm confident because I know that if someone tries to commit a crime against me and I'm within earshot of other people, I can call for help and people will respond to my call. But if Daniel Penny is convicted of a crime for defending himself and others, then are we still gonna be able to be confident that when we call for help, someone's going to answer? I think not. This is why watching this video made me sick to my stomach. It's also, if you can, why I'm gonna share with you the Legal Defense Fund of Daniel Penny. It has, and this is, a, this is good, this is, this is proper. This, this Give, Send, Go for Daniel Penny's Defense Fund has already collected uh, $1.8 million. If you can, donate. If you can't, share it. Send up your prayers. This is a pivotal moment for our society, um, one that we should not downplay or ignore. We're going to choose one way or we're going to choose the other and our country is not going to be the same for it. Okay, let's talk about the new Twitter CEO. Linda Yaccarino, she comes from NBC Universal. And I gotta tell you guys, I really, really, really wanted to give Elon Musk the benefit of the doubt here. I know there's a lot of conservatives who were saying, listen, Elon Musk would not have spent $44 billion on Twitter in the name of free speech if he wasn't committed to free speech. Maybe he knows what he's doing. You don't know what the behind the scenes conversations with this new CEO, Linda, were like. So don't judge too quickly. Give her the benefit of the doubt. I really, really wanted to do that. I wish I could. I even for a second thought, okay, maybe there's something to this. Because if you look at Linda Yaccarino's Twitter account, like the day that this was announced, before Elon even officially announced it, when reporters were just saying, hey, Elon's in talks with, with Linda Yaccarino, she's the most likely candidate to be named as Twitter CEO. If you looked at Linda Yaccarino's Twitter account, um, and we have a story on LizWheeler.com that, that, that shows this list, she actually follows a lot of anti-woke Twitter accounts. Some of our favorite Twitter accounts. Uh, I'm talking like she follows Cat Turd. I'm talking she follows Libs of TikTok. She follows Ron DeSantis, the Babylon Bee, follows e Elon Musk's mother. Um, all kinds of really anti-woke popular Twitter accounts. She follows them. And I thought, okay, 
Well, maybe she worked in a very liberal corporate setting, but maybe she's one of those secret conservatives, right? I wanted to give the benefit of the doubt, but I gotta tell you, I just can't. I can't, and here's why. She is not only from NBC Universal, she's also a chairman of the World Economic Forum's Task Force on the Future of Work. I repeat, she is part of the World Economic Forum. The World Economic Forum, which is a weird conundrum, right? Why would you follow Cat Turd on Twitter and also be a part of Klaus Schwab's creepy World Economic Forum? The two things don't really match. Um, so you do a little bit more digging here and you find that just a couple months ago, Linda Yaccarino uh, interviewed, publicly interviewed Elon Musk and the things that she was saying in this interview are insanely troubling. She completely disagrees with Elon Musk's commitment to free speech. She wants actually to give advertisers what's known as the heckler's veto over content moderation. So what that means is if an advertiser is a woke corporation and they don't want um, anything but woke content to be allowed on Twitter, Linda Yaccarino was advocating to Elon Musk in person, to his face, that he give advertisers the power of the heckler's veto, which obviously is the antithesis of free speech. Take a look at this. So you've got a massive platform. You have a vision yeah. that is a spectrum of just daily open sourced conversation. And, and they can conduct their lives, their business, their commerce, whatever they can do on your platform. That's a pretty big vision. But, but in the middle should be um, advertising opportunity. That sounds like a great opportunity. I can talk about my brand, mm -hmm. I can get my customers to communicate, and then they could also buy stuff. That sounds yes. pretty good, right? You'll be able to buy things just directly on Twitter. One click, boom, done. But they need to feel that there is a, an opportunity for them to influence what you're building, that vision. What we're doing here, whether it's me trying to push and prod you uh, on your tweets. Um, for example, you've said uh, you probably shouldn't tweet after 3 a.m. Well, I've got Probably good into, advice for all of us. I've gotten myself into trouble a few times. Um, I'm, I'm very aware of those. Um, so after 3 a.m., you travel all over the world. Lord knows how you handle time zones in space. Will you commit to be a little more uh, specific and not tweet after 3 a.m.? People in this room would, would like to see that. Hi, guys. It's Liz Wheeler. Don't forget to watch my show, The Liz Wheeler Show, every night at 7 p.m. on The First TV. You can download the free First TV app, or you can visit thefirsttv.com slash Liz and start watching today.